we are the Bass Brothers, a drum and bass duo from Portugal who's been around for more than 15 years. In this course, we will show you how to build a track from start to finish. Walking you through the creative process, creating drums, rhythms, sound design, resampling, and tweaking all the sounds around. We go and get through the arrangement, and by the end, some mix and mastering. This is Nupi from Bass Brothers, and you are watching our drum and bass course for DMB Academy. Hello everybody, this is Nupi from Bass Brothers and we're here today doing this track deconstruction for DMB Academy. Uh, the track we're doing today is one of our latest releases from Digital Terror Records uh, from the Pressure EP and the track name is Pressure. We selected this track because it's a simple track with only a few elements You can, and to show you, you can do a solid track, a nice track with only a few elements without complicating too much, without a lot of sound design and really complicated things. So for those who doesn't know the track, let's have a listen and then we'll start getting to it. You can see it's a nice roller. The main groove is on the bass, the main bass. And unfortunately, this project is a really old project, already done from other projects. We use a lot of our samples on this project and all the things we have from other tracks and stuff like that. So we don't have a lot of sound design and synthesizers and stuff like that. Uh, but I managed to replicate, let's say, close to it, to the main bass. So you guys can see how we get to it. It's really simple, actually. Uh, 
but uh, I managed to do it before earlier the same groove just gonna show you guys what's the the groove of the bass okay and how do we get this so if you if you clear all the machines here all the plugins you see it's a simple what oh, with the master on let me take the master out as you can see it's kind of an 808 with a kick so pretty simple and then we just EQ it and give the tweak it to taste let me get the all the master on well it's not it's not fun with a master on let's do an on solo so you can see we clean we clean it a little bit let's get the sub and then we add a driver see all these artifacts and all these modulation that's doing I like the driver a lot it's good to find on simple sounds you can get just a simple sub bass and just an 808 a simple one and grab a driver or something on it and it will bring all the transients from the bass and sometimes the result are things really cool sometimes not <laughs> but most of the times yeah go easy don't go too crazy on the knobs and work around it and sometimes only a little tweak and it sounds perfect so from here a little bit more Q oh and this one we lower the because of the master let's pull the master up so you guys can hear it better okay it's getting to shape this last one uh, probably was on the mixing master process that we thought they needed some to clean up some frequencies here usually on basses um the frequencies around 300 400 well around 300 let's say it all is muddy have a look at it and sometimes just clean a little bit to get it more clear in the mix so and in the end the uh, side chain we're applying side chain for the kick go back to it in a in a bit so let me show you one way to get that bass uh we use a lot reactor a lot most of the, well trk1 actually that's from reactor it's a sequencer it's half uh, kick half bass you have a lot of things and to mess around and at the same time not as much so you don't lose yourself in sound designing and all that and only with a few knobs we you can change a lot the sound just gonna solo this has reverb on it yeah okay can see tweaking around here duration amount the band because what I'm doing here is actually using a kick and not the bass part is off it's muted and just with the kick it's just a simple pattern we managed to 
you get that sound we would like. It's not the same, but it's pretty similar. Let me see. Oh, well, this one has the... Oh, it doesn't have so much high-end as I'm doing it here. Let's clean it a bit. Okay. And now we open the driver, same as that one. So as you can see the artifact that I was doing in the other one is doing similar to this one. I'm sorry I, I don't have the original file but you guys get the idea why i want to do this as well is because as you can see after we in the end we change the notes okay so how do you do this well it's easier but let's just bring the bounce the or put it to audio the main base uh, oh i'm i'm doing this i'm sorry because because this is a um, sequencer you can't play notes so the note that it is you can change the notes in the sequencer over here but you can't play the note so if you want to change note you have to bounce it or to go get it to audio in logic is bounce get it to audio and then sample it and then you can play the notes so it's what I'm going to do now just gonna bounce remove here things from master don't bounce with master on okay just bounce it uh, offline cool bass already did two Okay, let's go over here. Pam. We have the base. Okay, uh, and well, can do it with any sampler in Logic. You can just grab it for the quick sampler. Can get the original or optimize optimize will find the key i don't want it to touch in the key or so i'm just keep it with the normal one keep it in classic okay and don't forget to put it in follow tempo that way unless you want it but that way the tempo in this case because we have a rhythm base the tempo will keep the same and let me show you guys What's going on here? So, let's put the master on. Yeah, let's see. gonna show you guys Too much. <laughs> so let's see. It only changes here. But it's pretty much it. Sorry. The other base over there. But you guys got the idea how do we get to that base. So that's it. And then 
doing all the cueing and all that after we pitch the notes and all that. So that way the effect will be, especially when you're doing key changes in the sampling, sometimes you may create some strange artifacts. So if you do um, with the dry sound, the pitching, uh, afterwards when you're going to get the effects on top and everything, especially if you use distortions or 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 saturations and all that, it will... It will camouflate the the strange artifacts that it will give you if that's your intention. But I'll I'll advise to do it pitching before and then applying all the effects. Otherwise, the algorithm will try a lot to do a lot of changes in the distorted and saturated always already with a lot of transients, and the result might not be as good as you like to be. So that's one advice for it. <clears throat> okay, next. Let's see this base. This one is a really old. We don't even know from where, just in the sample pack. So there's not much to say about it. just as you can see it's really noisy and all that so we did it <laughs> so that sound design is done in the EQ so let's grab this without just pulling out the sub and all that cleaning at the high end removing that crackles and all that so but in, in the mix it sounds good, so that's what it matters. Sometimes you do strange things, but what it matters is, it, is that it sounds good in the in the mix. That's the main thing. Actually, I forgot to talk you about this reverb, this bus that's going on the response space. Uh, it's just a, a small reverb and just a little bit of, of amount and short length in it just to give it a bit of width in the um, response space for the brakes and that that way it opens it a little bit more so it won't be so shut it's barely notable but it's there <laughs> as you can see. So let's move to the beat. The drums. Just solo drums, so you guys can listen to it. Okay, so as I told you before, this track was made with samples from all different uh, tunes. So most of the sounds are already processed. So they just need little tweaks to adjust to the track we're, we're doing at the moment. So it's always nice if you can uh, select so some of your samples, even in tracks and finish or tracks that you don't like, but you will say you like that snare, you like that kick, you like that perk loop or stuff like that, always save them for later. That way, next time you'll do a new track, you already have good samples and that you prepared earlier and will make your workflow much faster. So, <clears throat> just go and walk you through. This, this bit, we already have it on the bus. Just gonna remove everything for now. Let's see. The kick is already from one track. It has the name of the track. <laughs> so in here, I'll show you the. As you can see, it's a really harsh kick, and it won't fit in this. It wouldn't fit in this track, so we just clean it a bit. And because he 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 lost a little bit of the punch, the high end punch. <coughs> Sorry. We added the second kick. 
SD sollen. Mainly just a tonal change and both together they sound good. As you can see. So moving on for the snares. On this snare, we added first the a reverb, just a small amount, to give that extra tail, medium length, small actually, and a little bit of just a wet, and then we cued it, just clean a bit the low end. And then with the transient, we're going to clean that release. As you can see, it gets more punchy. But first we needed to bring those transients all up with the reverb and so, and then with the transient, you can control your, your snare better. And because it, it didn't have like a, um, a main transient really pumping like a, a regular snare it's more like a clap let's say it uh, we push the attack to the top so so it bites more it makes that bite without as you can see and this way we manage to get a tight snare and then just a, a punch to give that click. Just lowering, uh, going up in volume here. And then again, transient, taking out a little bit of the attack of it. And both together. See, they look really cool. So, then adding a couple of elements to make the rhythm. Um, on the percussions, we haven't done much, as I told you already processed just cleaning the low end so it gives room in this case for kick and bass always try to clean your low end just EQing when you have good samples you don't need to do a lot to tweak a lot in the sounds just in the in the mix bus, we're going to do some adjustments to it to glue all together. Okay. And mainly here, we're just cleaning the ends, any muddy part they might have. This one doesn't even need to be clean. It's already clean before. And let's see about this one. Yeah. Cool. So, as you can see, you already have the loop. Now in the mix bus, it's picking a bit, but it doesn't matter. It shouldn't. Just doing a gluing bus a compressor, just to glue all the bits together to remove some peaks. And just doing a noise reduction around minus two. Um, sorry, again, reduction around minus two, minus three, 
and that way we control and glue all the drums together. And here we we like to use the API 560 because it has a natural distortion on it that emulates the original the original gear so it, it gives a little warmth when you you pick well you, you override it let's let's say you use it to the max it gives you a little bit of warmth to the sound barely notice but um it gives it uh, that that little something let's say it's the same if, if you had like a mixing console or something you pass the sound through it just without doing nothing it will come with the sound will come differently a little bit because of the analog gear and all the things that get through it comes in this case the api gets it warmer so I, I don't know <laughs> how to explain it better. <laughs> so just using the the emulation from the the, the equalizer. <laughs> well, we have the single EQ, but that's one for mixing only for for doing filtering in the beat in the intro. I can show you that later in the mi mixing stage, and then. Um, just a limiter to bring down the, um, the drums that way I can push it a little harder squeeze it a little bit more and bring the volume to minus 6 that's a volume there I'm happy with That way for the mixing step we have enough room for the thing. We are the Bass Brothers, a drum and bass duo from Portugal who's been around for more than 15 years. In this course we will show you how to build a track from start to finish. Walking you through the creative process, creating drums, rhythms, sound design, resampling and tweaking all the sounds around. We go and get through the arrangement and by the end some mix and mastering. This is Nupi from Bass Brothers and you are watching our drum and bass course for DMB Academy. So only with the beat and the bass lines we already have an interesting groove. Uh, we have changes every eight bars from the beat to to keep the track interesting and always changing every eight bars. As you guys can see. New elements coming up. So this way we can keep the track moving and without being too much boring. Okay, just going to get back now because we already had the groove and we needed to get an intro for this track. So 
let's get to the intro for now and then we go for the vocals and all that that goes into the track but keep in mind that we already have like a 32 bar loop already interesting with a nice groove just with the two basses one main bass and one response bass and with the drums just variating or adding new elements every eight bars so uh, we're looking for something interesting for this track and in this one we used arcade arcade is a sampler that has loads of um, well let's say um, banks from all kinds of of let me see yeah from all kinds of stuff from vocals to to drums to sound synths everything and in this case we used the um, orchestra and it has great sound Well, it's really cool, and the good thing about Arcade is the quality of the sounds is really, really nice. So, we, we you, you barely need to touch or tweak it in this case, because it's um, orchestra sound is already equalized and produced the best way possible. And this is how we, we did for the intro. Okay, so and it's really fun to play with and really easy to find the sounds. It's very intu intuitive. So we have this little scene here. That's another sound. It's like a sonar sound. And this was not the same sound. As you can see, we had a big cut here before. And we remove what we don't need and we manage to get just the, um, the sonar sound of it just to simplify and it goes <clears throat> with a high cut from start to finish of the intro always rising to build up some well building up So, as you can see, really easy way to do a intro. <clears throat> Simple way, you don't need to get over the top sometimes. Less is more. So, this sound here, yes, it's another sound from Arcade, from the different bank. Stuttered, don't know what even this is. Just a shaker's thing. What leaves all this? Okay, some effects sounds. Once again, really cool, really good. They already have delay. I don't know some wash. That's wash might be reverb. They give strange sounds, tr strange names to effects sometimes. <laughs> so as you can see, really simple way to get a intro going. Just a riser. One of many's we have. 
let's get to the vocals. The vocals are one of the things that keeps the track interesting. And, and this might take some time sometimes getting the right vocals for the for your track if you need of any vocals but this track without vocals wouldn't be uh, so interesting so let's have a look to the vocals Okay, so let's mute these vocals and have a look what we had here. This was already bounced and with all the effects I just did it again here in the intro because most of the times with delays you want them to cut in the um, the right place and sometimes in this case for the drop uh, this delay over here and over here I cut the um, decay from it so it won't grow for the for the drop uh, we want silence and only these vocals here. So pretty simple way we did it here. This was the sound. Just repeat it here. Just duplicate the channel. Remove the delay. This channel down here is the delay, so... In the hood. Okay, so there's some vocals from a shop that we cut from something I can't remember where, but as you can see, it even had some weird sounds on it. But it, it, it looks good in the track, so just added a delay, just one, two, fit back to the minimum. Clean a little bit the low end, a little bit of the high, so it comes out, so it won't be the same as the um, the original sound, and makes it a bit different. Filter over here. Take the pressure. Hang, take the pressure. Hang, take and here we have again the delay for this one. This is a longer delay, one bar, but a much longer one. Again, cleaning the lows and highs. And then cut here the decay. If you, if you don't want to, to do this, you can just bounce and then cut the sample. <sighs> and is it? Coming from here. Can't take the pressure. You can see as just some chop vocals. Just give it much more lively. If we remove these chop vocals, the track won't be so. It won't be as interesting, it will be much duller. Over here is the same as here, but uh, as I told you before, we already had all these uh, bounced and made into one track. So, and then afterwards we came over here and did extra, 
tweaking on this one. So. As you can see here, we cut the delay off. For this effect, you can use. Well, here is already done. Let's go back to the beginning here. Just a pitch down, a simple pitch down. I believe it was done with the logic pitch. It's like a fade, but with pitch. Let's see. Hmm. Slow down and now bring it over here. As you can see, easy. Simple things here and there make the track interesting. Mainly what you're doing here, <clears throat> every 32 bars giving emphasis, so when it, the drop comes again, uh, the, the silence, let's say we need to have loudness, we need the quiet, so that way when the drop breaks again, when the, the drop comes again, you will feel all the sub and everything because of all the um, uh, confusion, let's say we have, uh, not confusion, but all the elements that we are adding up, keep adding up, adding up, adding up, and then going back again for the quiet. <laughs> We are the Bass Brothers, a drum and bass duo from Portugal, who's been around for more than 15 years. In this course, we will show you how to build a track from start to finish. Walking you through the creative process, creating drums, rhythms, sound design, resampling and tweaking all the sounds around. We're going to get through the arrangement and by the end some mix and mastering. This is Nupi from Bass Brothers and you are watching our drum and bass course for DMB Academy. So let's talk a bit about the arrangement <coughs> and sequencing of the track. So, as I told you before, every eight bars, um, we give it a change, something new, whether it's drums, the sounds, the vocals, uh, whatever it comes, suits best. So, in here, <coughs> we have all the automations that... Um, to modulate the sounds going in so when you put the sounds they won't just pop out from nothing and that way it gives you a, an intrusive um, passage uh, and a, um, a transposition and uh, for the sounds so as you can see here <laughs>
for the big break. Do it like a, a quieter drums. As you can see. And um, the, the sound of the orchestra helps to slow down a little bit. And the changing of the note here, repeating. Can't take the pressure. Same the thing with the vocals, just giving it a bit of filtering. So, so if we had it like this, as you can see, it will come out from the whole thing. And that way, if we bring it down here. Again, the synth, the sonar coming from back there. Can't take the pressure. Here, modulating. Bring the things slowly up. Okay, here in the the drums, let me show you all the effects from the filtering. It comes in the intro as well. So we're controlling here. I had it off uh, earlier just to show you guys. Well, it, it, it's off all the time. It just uh, it, it just gets on here in the break, in the break, and in the intro. <clears throat> so as you can see, we're controlling the frequency and. Uh, the reverb, we're giving it a big reverb, so it, it looks like it comes from the bottom, you know, from down under. <clears throat> and that's the effect cause it. otherwise without it, it will be like this. And with the reverb. Okay. <clears throat> so this is an easy way to make a transposition from the beat to be coming up to bring out the beat from nothing. And we do it again here in the break. So, as you can see, this is a really simple track. The elements are the that we have the few elements positioning in the right place and doing the right thing. It will so we'll do the the track. So, as you can see, you don't need a lot to do a track. It's quite easy when you already have your samples and just putting all together that way you don't lose too much time in sound design and stuff like that and the track and, and you end up finishing tracks much quicker. So, but you still have to do always some tweaking and stuff around. So, <clears throat> 
if I switch off all of these, Take the pressure. okay, we have enough headroom. Our sounds are not peaking. That way we will be ready for mastering. My mastering chain, we usually, um, I already do have a pre-master chain that I use like um, uh, a standard. And I, I start producing usually with it on. So when I switch everything off, it never picks and I always have a, a, f a lot of headroom. So <clears throat> that's at least how we usually do it. That way you know the effects that everything that you have on the master uh, will 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 do to the sounds you're tweaking at the moment. So it's kind of while you're going, you're already mixing and mastering, but in the end, we'll have to check everything again and switch everything off and see if everything is okay. If nothing is picking too high, like, let me grab here. So everything is in place. So to tell you about my master chain, our master chain, I usually start with this one. That's from Brainworks BX Control V2, but you can use any other thing. Basically what this does, it, it grabs everything. Even if you put the, um, <clears throat> the sub on mono, the basses on mono, kicks and everything, but sometimes there's some bleed from the other sounds or even <clears throat> if you want to make sure that everything is on mono. So what this does is brings everything under 150 Hertz uh, in mono. It turns everything into mono in case you, if you had like synths or stuff like that, that you have in stereo and they will still have some bleed below 150 that usually you, you don't want that, but it might happen. So it makes sure that everything are, uh, below 150 is in mono. And then I just open a, a little bit the stereo width. I already give it the, the width that we pretended, but we open a little bit more, just a, a small touch around 115, 17, depends on the track. And you always have to listen it to, to it. So let me show you. You won't listen a big difference only in the stereo width. Take the pressure. As you can see, it opens a little bit the track. Next, we have a compressor to glue everything in. On this compressor, you don't want a big gain reduction. It's mostly like the um, the the glue compressor that we use on the drum bus. So this is about the same thing. We just want to stick the sounds all together and prevent some picking that might have. So I usually do a gain reduction around minus three. I open the attack so you it leaves the transients in and a short release for the pumping. So, as you can see, let me get the one four, again stagging, two and a half, let's bring it to two. gets more punch here. You will feel more punch with this compressor. Okay. Oh, I also add a little bit of distortion, soft distortion. Just because distortion is never enough. <laughs> And once again, helps glue everything together. After that, 
we bring out the limiter I already have a preset, mainly what I do, just a little bit of lock ahead, some attack, short attack and short release. Just trying to pull the track. bring a, a little bit of transi transients this lets through the transients lets the transient pass by so it don't doesn't squatch them as much so and I'm using a dynamic here dynamic limiter on this one because in this track we're using two limiters and you will see why so mainly After this, all the, for as odd it might be, we use again the API 560 because besides the distortion, what it, it, it acts as a limiter as well because you, if you have it in the analog mode. So what we do is sometimes when you do um, the limiting, it, it, it takes out some transients, not transients, but it removes a bit of the high end. So what we do here is pull up the high hand and from the track and we come from here from 250 to 16k and going up a little bit just as long as, as much as we need you you have to listen for the so so we got the crisp back We usually don't do this, but sometimes yeah. it's like being lazy, but it works. Once again, the distortion, the artifacts and distortion created by the emulation of the API, it, it feels warm, even if you if you're pulling the the high end, the meets and the highs, and even though it, it doesn't look, uh, doesn't sound really harsh, it, it sounds warm. So and then just open another limiter just to bring down those peaks that it's doing here. So you can see doesn't make a big change. And we still have some peaks, and then in the output, uh, bring it to minus zero five, mainly because when you convert it to MP3, MP3, um, the um, there's one thing called the intersample conversion. I I believe it's that's the that's the name ISC, and what it does is um, in while doing the conversion of the MP3, the some peaks. If you have it, the output in zero, it will peak, especially on devices and stereos with low qualities, where the conversion, the converter is not good enough. Like, uh, let's say, in some uh, portable speakers or headphones and stuff like that, even the sound systems. But if you pull down the, um, to zero five, let's say, or sometimes zero three uh th you can prevent those peaks from happening and those crackles to 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 get on the on the, on the track if 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 ever happened to you after mastering a track if you output is in zero and then you're gonna play it in the car in the, your speakers on your headphones or stuff like that and you feel some crackles and stuff that's that's why probably <laughs> so unless it's for something else in, in back there 
in the um, mixing process or something. Yeah. So, as you can see in the end here, managed to get error miss of five bar. Usually we measure with LFUs. This is just to check. Even if I have zero five here, as you can see, we have zero two and zero three in three in true peaking. So I, I actually I can demonstrate to you guys that. So we have it in zero. It's peaking. You see? Then bring it down, let's say three. Okay. Three is in zero, but I always like to give it a little bit more. In, and it's not half dB that's going to make your music uh, low, not loud. So, as you can see, we have a LUFS, um, that's loudness units for second, I believe. And usually we try to get ours around minus five. So as you can see, minus five five. Uh, one thing that I'm going to tell you, you have like three three kinds of um, of leveling of metering. Let's say the momentary that gives you, as it says in the moment, and this it's good to know the loves in the in the moment that you're listening that that's not really important then you have the short time that makes like an um, uh, average of the uh, short period but usually what you want to do is the integrated that makes the whole track it makes an average from the whole track and that's usually what it matters so I'm not going to play it now from start to finish, but even if, uh, if I did, uh, because of the lower parts and all that, even though we will stay around minus five, five, five or minus five, seven or something like that. But you want to play the track from start to finish. So... Well, I know this was a short breakdown. We didn't have, we used only samples and stuff like that. I tried to recreate the bass sample over here. But you guys, if you want to go more into depth in how we do stuff and all that, we have our master class on DMV Academy that's coming out or maybe already got out and there you have like six seven hours of video and more in depth and how we do sound design and how we structure and we build a track uh, from scratch so f as i told you before this one it's more like um, a track that we done from all other different tracks we only have a few elements that are new to this track um, most of the samples are all used in the other tracks that we have along the years other sounds like this bass we don't even know where it was created or when just readapt it and if you try to do that uh, doing sound design or even as i told you before go to your uh, trash tracks, <laughs> the ones that you don't touch anymore or you feel like you don't like them. And there's always one element or something, a kick, a snare, break, anything, even if it's a bass or effects, and save them. 
and later on when you're doing tracks you go back to that and you'll see you'll have all the elements uh, much more easier and the workflow will be much more uh, easier to go and that way you won't stop creativity trying to find the right sounds from all your libraries and all sample packs from here and then so now let's go to the Q&A We are the Bass Brothers, a drum and bass duo from Portugal who's been around for more than 15 years. In this course, we will show you how to build a track from start to finish. Walking you through the creative process, creating drums, rhythms, sound design, resampling, and tweaking all the sounds around. We go and get through the arrangement, and by the end, some mix and mastering. This is Nupi from Bass Brothers, and you are watching our drum and bass course for DMB Academy. Okay, so let's go for the Q&A now. Let's see the questions you guys got for me. Okay, so first question. Do you mix in mono? What's your perspective about that? I don't mix in mono, but I check it, the mix in mono from times to times. Um, usually, if you got um, a really wide mix, you have to be careful and, and check it in mono because sometimes what it happens is you lose information when you get it to mono. And most of the clubs, the, the sound system plays in mono, doesn't play in stereo. So if you're going, if you're ever wondering why, why you had a good track sounding at home in stereo and suddenly in the club it lacks something, that's probably because you didn't check the mix in mono and there's, there's losing some frequencies and information is, is lost because it won't be reproduced in mono. So always keep in mind to check the mono to see if it, everything's okay it sounds the same well, it won't sound properly the same but it will, will almost sound the same um this is it yeah <laughs> uh have you tried are the doors outside of logic what's your philosophy about choosing doors okay i've tried many 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 years ago uh, i started with uh I, I can't even remember. Oh, yeah, it was Project 5. It doesn't even exist now. And then I I went straight to Logic. At uh, that time, it's still Logic 5. So you, it, it was still available for PC. It wasn't a Mac exclusive. Mac exclusive was only about uh, around version 8, if I'm not mistaken. So I started with Logic 5 and uh, kept with it all these years. And... Um, no, I haven't tried. Well, I tried Ableton when sometimes producing with, with with my friends. But the thing is, I even tried to, to change or to see because Ableton has different things from Logic, right? And for the and for that, I wanted to try to see what I could do. What it's an, another tool to to work it out. But the thing is, I get frustrated because the th simple things they already do in Logic, I don't know how to do them in like in Ableton. So I, I haven't never tried to go too much deep into it. So just keep it with a, it. Doesn't matter which DAW you use if you know how to use it properly, and um, that's that's the thing. It doesn't unless it's a really cheeky one but most of the main doors nowadays are pretty good to do anything or at least for electronic music they're really good so just pick one that you feel comfortable with that you know how to work with it and know all the tip the, all the tips and tricks from the door and everything and um, yeah that would be fine I, I i i think there's no sense on that door war that's around there but i think it's just for fun that. <laughs> but yeah that's the thing pick your draw the one you feel more comfortable with and just study it hard and uh, it will be okay <laughs> so next question 
Do you approach your music with an intended sound and feeling, or does it come out as you experiment? Well, both. Sometimes I'm, I'm thinking in a melody or in a feeling, right? Uh, and other times I'm just doing sound design or stuff like that, looking for sounds and all that, and suddenly the idea pops out. Uh, it happens to me many times in, our, in the studio and I, I grab a melody or something for an intro or something like that. I just grab my phone and sing it to the phone. And then, because I know for sure that I will forget it by the time I get to the studio. So I just do that and sing it for the phone. And then when I get to the studio, I hear it and try to replicate it and continue with the, with the idea. Other times we just sit in the studio, no ideas, just try doing some sound design and stuff like that. And then sometimes it comes, uh, the idea ends up building itself. And, and yeah, that's, that's the way. It doesn't have a one way. It's both ways. It depends on the days. <laughs> okay. How do you know when to use sampling and when to use synthesis? Okay. Um, well, uh, I don't. If I don't have a sample for it, uh, if if it's like uh, drums, um, like drum sounds, uh, ninety nine percent of the drum sounds are samples that we use. Uh, we usually don't do drum synthesis, and then for the other sounds, if uh, if it's like an instrument or stuff like that, or some peculiar um, particular sound that's usually an instrument, like say strings or horns or something like that, brasses and all that, I go for sampling, like as I told you before, Arcade is really good on it, uh, or other sample bass packs, and, but usually for basses, pads, uh, all the elements, uh, music elements, besides like real instruments and stuff like that, we always use synthesis. Um, so or or use samples from synthesis we've done before for some design we've done before so yeah that's it okay what's the most important advice producers should hear about mixing okay the most important about mixing okay i'll just mix on low volumes well, the mo it's not the most important, but uh, let's say start with the sub, with the bass. That that usually is the thing you want to be, to have the main uh, focus on it. Start with the element that you want the main focus, and then start going with all the other elements after. You can even lower the volume, as a lot of people say, just turn down the faders all down, and then push the... Um, the sub or the element you want to to be the the focus element pull pull it to the level you desire and then go with the other sounds back around in it and and pull it all all up to where you want to hear them and where do you want to fit in the mix um and it, yeah this is a good advice other other thing about mixing, yeah, I told you to try to mix in low volume, because uh, that way you, because you, you, if you're mixing in really high volume, you will hear all the elements, and you have the, you you have the thing to lower some volumes and some sounds because it's too loud. And the thing is, if if you put it really 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 low low volume. And you you hear the sounds. Oh, I don't hear that uh, that hi hat, or I don't hear that effects, or something like that. That's probably you have to bring it up. So if you mix in really low volume, and you can hear the whole elements in the track, so probably will be a, a good mix. <clears throat> okay. How do you keep? Deep tracks like this interesting having so many few elements. Okay, as I told you before in the 
the construction a track like this um, it, it can be kept interesting with the vocals that that was the thing that it's always changing and and moving around and also with the um, the percussion every eight eight bars you you change the percussion that way something new will come up in the beat or in the um, in the music and at the same time the vocals feel and keep you distracted from the repetition. So yeah, for this one, uh, that's the thing, vocals and changing rhythms or adding new elements every eight bars. That way you always hear something new um, every eight bars and it, you you won't um, even notice, well, you notice, but uh, you, you won't see that it's so much repetitive and so dull. That way the vocals here and there, as you can see, if in here if we remove the vocals yeah the track will be really boring let's say it because there was no elements it's just bass and and well, just drum and bass <laughs> but yeah here in this case vocals and elements but usually if you like change every eight bars uh, add a new element to the track it will get either it is percussion or something like that or some effects or something to keep your mind distracted oh there's something else oh there's something else okay so yeah that's the advice okay how do you approach creating turnarounds oh well um, not really sure but sometimes just try different things and uh, even sometimes when you or change pitching on the bass, um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's something that comes out. I don't really have. Okay, I'm just gonna do a turn around and will happen like this. Uh, but yeah, change some elements. You can do a switch by changing the brakes and stuff like that. Create some momentum before the turnaround. That way you will be more noticeable. But yeah, that's it. Okay, what's the best advice for a beginner producer? Uh, well, my advice will be just pick a few, let's say, Let's pick a one DAW, <laughs> pick a few plugins, like a couple of things, not too much, like two, three, and a, a few VSTs or a few plugins from FX, and um, learn them and go deep into them. And that way it, it will be really easy. At the beginning will be a bit boring, but later on it will be much easier for you to achieve what, you, what you're thinking. If you know, like if you want a bass sound, let's say something based on like break or based on like a, any other artist, and you okay, you hear the sound and you might, and it, when the time you 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 can replicate it, but for that you need to really know inside of your synth, let's say, it, and and the. Um, the the plugins that you have so don't go crazy and uh, like 20 synths and uh, hundreds of fx plugins because that way you'll be using all this one and another and you won't learn just one right so um, that will be my advice focus yourself in only a few um only in a few plugins and or a few synths and a few effects and that way you can go deep into them and it will be much easier in the future for you to create sound design and your day you you can translate your ideas much faster and won't get frustrated and, and lose even your creativity and all that okay how do you start tracks do you make the drop first or the intro well um, either way, uh, sometimes, most of the times I start with the intro, uh, but sometimes I start with the drop. It all depends what, what was your idea, what was my idea when I came to the studio, for if I was thinking a melody or if I was thinking in a rhythm or something for bass. And so either way or, or one or the other, it don't, I don't have a, a rule. 
Do you separate your creative process into sessions? If so, how does each session work? Well, no, I don't. I just... Mm, cause, mm, well, the creative process of sessions, yeah, sometimes I do, because if I, if, let's say if I have an idea for uh, an intro, let's say, and uh, I'm the whole day into it, and sometimes I don't finish, yeah, and the next day I'll do it again. But, but usually I, I just go for it, and I don't really think uh, the thing like a session, I just keep doing it and that's it i'm the whole day in the studio so i can do it like i i have time to to produce and all that stuff so usually i don't keep in mind a lot to sessions let's say it so how do you master your tracks can you break down the mastering chain okay i did that already just earlier but I'll just give it a look here again. So, as I told you before, uh, this is just an analyzer span. And I told you before, I use the VX control. That's mainly a mono maker. So, everything it, I already did it. I already removed all the stereo with uh, under. 150 during the mix but uh, just for some bleed that sometimes it may have some sounds and stuff like that i just keep it for sure that's all in mono in the master chain under 150. then i just give it a little bit of stereo width with the um, just a little twitch because i already give the width that i desire but now i'm giving like the width to the whole track together so it's a little bit different. It gives us a space a little bit, but just a little twitch, not too much. Otherwise, we'll be over. Afterwards, a compressor to glue everything. Uh, as you can, wait. as you can see, gain reduction around minus two, minus three. You want a little gain reduction because you you just want to, to glue all the sounds together. You don't want the the compressor to react too too harsh on it. It's just a subtle compression, just subtle. Oh, I and I, I also add a little bit of distortion and um, in the in the compressor as well. Just a soft distortion, just to bring it a little bit more. It's never enough on distortion. <laughs> And um, afterwards, L2, just for the limiting. Take the And then usually I stop here, but because of this limiting, it removed a little bit of, this is like a hack. You should have do this, but it's like a kind of a hack because it lost a little bit of um, high end, a little bit of it of mids. I just uh, grabbed the, um, the API 515 equalizer, pull it a little bit, the mids, and then just get another one. As you can see, it's barely doing anything. Mainly you're splitting whatever the limiter is squashing into two limiters. But the, yeah, this is the um, mastering chain here. And here is just a level meter for picking. Just to check what we got here. Take the pressure. Just to see if it doesn't pick to zero. Yeah, this is it the mastering chain at least for this track usually i stop here in the first limiter but sometimes you need a little bit extra tweak there's no harm in that okay next question how long have you been producing and how have you managed to keep yourself motivated and consistent 
for so long. Well, we've been producing for like 15 years or so. Uh, for real, really for real, only about 10, 12 years. And how to keep motivated and consistent? Well, I don't know, just do what I like. <laughs> and I always want to do more music and music and music and music is all I want to do in my life. I, I don't have only the the, in my case, I don't have only the Bass Brothers project. I own a recording studio as well. So I work with a lot of people. So I'm not doing drum and bass all the time, all the time. And so, yeah, <laughs> it's been a long time for now. <laughs> but the good thing I have, I do different genres as well for the artists and stuff like that, for singers and stuff. So... I don't get like too much bored because it's always drum, bass, drum, bass, and, and I even like the, sometimes I work with musicians and stuff like that, and they give me ideas, and I get those ideas and I transpose it for the drum and bass tracks. So even sometimes invite some friends or something to get participating on the tracks. But yeah, that's the way it's it's been all these years. We don't even know. It's my wife. If, as my wife says, she always, I always say, oh, I've been producing for 10 years. Yeah, you've been producing for 10 years, for like 10 years. <laughs> so you didn't even notice the time going by. <laughs> how do you approach making build-ups? I've always wondered how to create a good transition between intro and drop without an EDM-ish build-up. Any advice for that? Well, you have a lot of approaches that you can do with build-ups. Um, yeah, I know what you mean by the EDM-ish build-up. But one way, like we do in this track, is use reverb to, to send um, all the sounds backward. And then while you're getting close to the drop, the sound is get, uh, it looks like the sound is getting closer and closer and closer and closer to you. And that makes that effect. Other thing is you can use, let's say, you can even use the bass that you're using on the drop, but if you cut it like the, if you cut the low frequencies, it's always, it's always nice to cut the low frequencies just before the drop, so the drop makes any impact, some impact, um, and yeah, and vocals are a good way to make that switch between um, intro and drop. Um, there's plenty of ways you can go around without doing that EDM-ish build-up. <laughs> but yeah. Do you have any idea before you sit down in the studio or do you just sit down and experiment until you get something good? Well, as I told before, yeah, sometimes I have ideas before I get to the studio and I'll record it in my phone, just sing it for my phone and then hear it later in the studio. And sometimes we're just experimenting and doing sound design and all that, and a sound will come up, and uh, it will start a track from there. And but sometimes I'm working on one track, and I'm doing oh, already have like the track half done, and then I, okay, I'm looking for a new bass, a response bass, or sound, or something like that, new element to get into track so I start digging it and doing and doing and doing and suddenly sometimes I do such a cool sound that it it won't fit the track because or maybe if it's a bass it's already too full or something like that but sometimes it happens I just switch I just pause that track and grab that sound and start a new track <laughs> so yeah that's the way What's the best advice for writer's block? Okay, best advice for writer's block. It's take a break, watch some DMB Academy tutorials, go out with some friends, have some fun, do something different. Even if it goes like one week or maybe two weeks, it can happen. It happens to everybody. So just don't get into it. Just don't get too frustrated with that. It will go away. Just do different things. Go out of the studio or even if you're in like a creativity block, just go and do some sound design, train your skills in your scenes, learn, learn, study, or go out and have fun. <laughs> if you only have like five plugins, what would they be? 
to pick. Okay. So five plugins that I would be uh, I won't I won't talk about synths. I only will talk about uh, FX because we have a synth question ahead. So for FX, let's say my favorite EQ it's the Pro Q free. Uh, for compressor, I use the API twenty five hundred, and then Trasher two from Isotope, um, Saturn from Five Filter, and I need one more. Oh yeah, for Reverb, Val Valhalla Vintage Verb. It's those are five of my top picks. Uh, I use in every every track for sure. <laughs> okay, what was the game changing moment that changed everything in your production? Uh, for me, it was when I bought uh, when I changed of speakers. I think like ten years ago, I used to to own um, when I started those cheap ones there used to be a Sansom 60 Resolve 65A they were really cool they just had a problem they had too much bass if there's something like that but they had a little bit too much bass and we even had to put foam on the on the the air the air tube so it wouldn't feel so much bass so but from the moment i bought the new speakers i now own and still own for 10 years uh, some adam pvp 22 and that was the game changing for me because from that moment uh, even listening to the tracks that i had done like when i changed it i had uh, i was completely blown away like whoa i was doing really really nasty tracks really bad mixes and all that because it was what the um, the speakers translated to me and as soon as i got the new speakers proper speakers let's say it uh it took a while it took like a month to get used to it to the sound but from there everything that you hear is what it is so yeah, uh, it's also a good advice for beginning producers that uh, told me earlier before there's a say that sometimes people say that is uh, get your budget when you start producing get your budget half of the budget will be for speakers and the other half of the budget will be for everything else including computer and all that so uh, speak it what you hear is really important important if it is headphones or if it is um, speakers that's really a game changing because you start listening to what it really is and you won't get like um, crazy things or crazy mixes from bad sound systems or bad monitors uh, what are some pieces of advice that the past newbie needed to hear when first start with production. The same advice that I told you earlier. Pick only a couple of plugins, learn really deep into them, and that that will be the the starting point for for advice. <laughs> How do you decide when the track is done or when it's time to throw it away and move on? Okay. For us, it's easy because we're two, so it, it, it's only better to decide now the track is rubbish or the track is good. But most of the time, we just keep it resting for like a week or two and then go back to it and listening. At the first listen, you will listen if it goes straight to the to the trash or if, if, you, if it's done or if you just need a little bit of twitch. But it's always good to give it some rest before you say, okay, it's done. Even on mixing process or mastering, you, you do the mixing, you do the mastering, okay, it's fine. Just leave it rested for like for a week or so or a couple of days or whatever it takes just for your ears don't 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 get used to to the track and then after a week grab the track listen to it again and what do you hear the first time you listen oh the snare is too high oh that bass is, is rubbish or something like that and that's a good way to know when to throw it away or if it's done or if if, if it's almost done yeah, that's a really good trick. Because if you're listening day after day after day, your 
ears will get used to it and it will start sounding perfect. It's the same thing when you do those marathons all night long up to the morning. And in most of the times when you go and listen in the next day, the things you've done like early in the morning will be rubbish. And you say, oh, I've destroyed the whole track because you've been listening for so long, so long, so long, so long, so long that your ears start getting fatigated. And, <clears throat> and uh, that won't work. Okay. Okay, have any advice on making bass lines fit together? Uh, yes, just um, join them all in, just grab them all for uh, a bus, for an auxiliary, put them all together and give them all together um, a treatment, just glue in with a compressor, just glue all the tracks, all the, um, the bass together, give a little bit more of distortion and stuff like that, but process them all together. You, you keep in mind, let's say you do the sound design part and all that separately for each bass, but then when you start adding like dynamics or saturation, distortion and all that, apply them all to the whole, um, to the, all the um, bass tracks the same the same distortion also you just uh, root the um, basses to all to one track to one mixing track and then from there just give them the same processing that you're giving to all of them that way they will fit together more nicely <laughs> okay favorite go to saturator and favorite to go to stereo whitener well for saturator a saturn for sure from fab filter and stereo widener i don't use a lot stereo widener besides the in the mastering chain it's very rare to use uh, stereo widener what i do i use like a um, chorus from talu that's like an emulation of the juno uh 106 um from roland and uh, i use that for widening in parallel and um, or for widening sounds that i as i told you in the track before let's say it's, it's for um, drums and stuff like that like hats and all that i just use sample delay and um, as i told you the difference between the left and right will give you a widening without giving too much uh, w without leaving any um, changes main changes in the sound because sometimes the widener may make it a little bit different so yeah that's it how much percent of your tracks see the light of the day <laughs> i don't know i don't know but maybe 10 15 percent i don't know <laughs> what are your favorite scenes these days okay my favorite scenes serums Mm, without a doubt the all uh, go all to it's uh, it works for anything 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 you, even if you want drum synthesis pads leads basses you know so and also i love the juno 106 i love that synth for me gives you that nostalgic uh, classic sound and uh, also for me now i own a moog sub, sub 37 so those are my free synths that i usually i end up with the music uh, i ended up i used the emulation from roland cloud for the 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 juno and uh, the other day uh, actually was a, a couple of weeks ago i just realized like man i use juno in almost every track so Hopefully in the future I'll, I'll own one for real. <laughs> well, okay, let's see. Any tips on drum synthesis? Uh, unfortunately not, because I told you before we don't do drum synthesis. Very rare. We, most of the times we use samples and then do sound design from the sample. So most of the times, if, uh, let's say yeah, because since but uh, you can grab like um. 
an 808 or a kick, uh, a boomy kick and stuff like that, and then start distorting with Trasher or something like that. But um, no, I don't have like a big advice about drum synthesis because we don't go into it. It's, so it's, not, it's not because we don't like it, just because we never did it. So <laughs> there's no, no real reason why. How do you analyze your tracks? Do you work with a specific frequency analyzer? If so, mainly what's the slope you're looking for? Okay, I analyze my tracks. I'm, I own a, a Moto, a sound card Moto, and they have um, in the inside uh, analyzers all they use. I'm going to pull this up. So I have it in an old, um, another screen here. Just going to put play here. Wait a sec. And I use the, um, the frequency analyzer. I use also the oscilloscope and uh, XY plot. That's the stereo one. And let me show you guys what this does. So, as you can see, here's the frequencies left and right here. Okay, I want to show you guys here. Just pause the um, the analyzer. You were wondering about the slope. Well, usually sub bass we go and minus six, at least minus six, and then sometimes depending on the track, if it's like a minimal track, you can go up to minus three because the track will be empty, and you need something to fill the track, and then in that case the the bass sub, don't forget the mids, just the sub, it, it isn't enough. But, um, but in that case, you can pull up the sub. But yeah, at least the sub will be at minus six. The kick, it depends, usually minus 12, sometimes minus 15. And the snare can go from minus 18 to minus 12 up here. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> about the frequency analyzer. <laughs> oh, just talking about it. This one is really cool because in the oscilloscope, because it, let's say if you're working with a compressor or something like that, you can do what the compressor is doing to the sound. Let me try and grab just a, here the kick for you guys can see. this one. Just, as you can see, you see the kick also crushed here, but if we go here to the remove everything from master, you see the kick here. So, this one, it's nice because you see the sound, the, the design of the sound. So that's why I really use all these tools. Always keep in mind, trust your ears, but always check it in the graphs. <laughs> well, if you want to analyze it, Logic is okay, and also you have from Waves the PAX analyzers are really good, really trustful. So that's it. Uh, okay, do you try to keep the dynamics of your bass? Last question. Do you try to keep the dynamics of your bass sounds and reads when you are processing them, or do you not mind limiting them to a sausage? Once again, there's not a rule that will be always like that, but I always try to keep the dynamics, even if it's just a little bit. I try not to squash everything because you want the movement or the sound. In, in, it's, let's, let's say, in order to have loud, you have to have quiet. So that's, uh, that's my way of thinking it. That's why 
like the intro could be a little bit lower and not as squashed let's say into a sausage and then in the drop you can make it really squashed or even so not as you can see this track is not totally totally scratch squashed it has some some variations but it's only a small amount but it always depends on every track uh, on on the tracks we're doing because there's not a perfect rule especially in drum bass experimentation is one of the best things you can do you can break all the rules and have a great sound or a great tune so there's no right way to do it is the the way you you want to do it and if it sounds good it's it's because it's right <laughs> okay guys so uh, finish the questions i hope you um, i was uh, it was uh, i was helpful to, with the answering my questions um that's it for today don't forget to go and check our master class in db academy um and that's it thank you all for being listening and uh, i'll see you next time Big up. We are the Bass Brothers, a drum and bass duo from Portugal who's been around for more than 15 years. In this course, we will show you how to build a track from start to finish. Walking you through the creative process, creating drums, rhythms, sound design, resampling, and tweaking all the sounds around. We're going to get through the arrangement, and by the end, some mix and mastering. This is Noopy from Bass Brothers, and you are watching our drum and bass course for DMB Academy.